mean, life was. I didn't really question it. You know? one, one more sub question on this topic. Uh, if you could give advice, I mean, I know a lot of younger kids watch these interviews. A lot of uh, younger kids read Eye Tricks, and of course, you're involved with the Illusionist, which has a very, very young audience. What yeah. is your 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 one bullet point advice on on what you said earlier, the the the, the trusting yourself kind of thing? You know, the the the, the you know, honing in on things like, like this is just stuff that you used to amuse yourself with in high school that eventually became, you know, a, a career for you. Uh, what mm -hmm. would you say? You know, what, what is your what is your advice to these kids? I, I would have to say framed around your question. It would be that no matter what you're reading in a book, what video you got, whatever trick you've seen someone else do, don't be afraid to manipulate that effect. Period. Absolutely don't be afraid to do it because there are no rules in magic. According to, in my opinion, and the way I structure my effects, it's all about the end result. Are you entertaining people? Are you having a good time? Are you, you know, exploring these things? You can always improve as you go. Every effect you do will get better and better and better. And just like a martial art, your kicks will get better and better. But don't be afraid to try different things and don't be afraid to throw your own personality into it. So I guess my advice would be if they, if they see a trick they like, they don't have to copy the lines and the moves and everything about it word for word from the magician they saw or from the dvd take bits take glean the information they they want from it the concepts the building blocks and manipulate the heck out of it and make it their own and that's i i know magicians tell people that all the time but i don't know if people get that from a process standpoint yeah you know i think being told this and they're thinking in their head okay i'll add my own little joke but no you can take bits and pieces of the sleight of hand the, the entire buildup of the effect rearrange it and take that effect and and think to yourself how can i make an entirely new effect based on that and just manipulate the heck out of it and it's okay because i give that advice only because when i first joined the magic castle i was about 25 years old and that's an organization in la it's a, it's a kind of a union for magicians for those yeah. watching and one thing that turned me off to magic which i regret letting it happen but it did I was doing an effect with four aces where I put them on the table, I cover them with my hands, and I let the audience pick where those aces are going to, which is going to vanish and where they're going to end up. A trick I came up with on my own, just based on opportunity. You know, I just kind of started putting stuff together. Well, I guess, evidently, this effect very closely resembles a very classic effect in magic. And I didn't know that at the time. I was just kind of free-flowing. Well, two pretty well-known magicians completely messed with my head, unbeknownst to them, by whispering to each other in the back of the showroom. They went, that's not how you do that trick. You totally did it wrong. And it, it completely blew my mind because it made me feel self-conscious about my own magic. Yeah. I'm just coming out of my shell at 25, just breaking in, and then I see these two really well-known magicians whisper, which they didn't know I heard, and I heard them say, he didn't do it right. He totally blew it. And it completely messed with my head. So years later, I look back at that and I thought, you know what? That's just two magicians who don't realize that you can manipulate magic any way you want. You, any way you want. Yeah. And so my advice definitely would be don't worry about it. Do it however you want as long as you're having a good time, as long as your audience is having a good time, and you're creating an experience for everyone. That's all that matters. Period. That, that's just that's the kind of advice I'd give, I think. Wise words. All right, let's move on. Outside of magic, completely outside of the genre, give me one performer who's influenced you more than any others. This is music, movies, sports, huh. anything. Holy smokes, that's a good one. I, uh, that's a tough question. And I have, to, I have to start off by saying that there are many, many people I respect, I, I admire, it's especially now in my career, I look at there's so many people I know. They're just they're phenomenal at what they do: dancing, yeah. singing, acting. I don't care what it. I mean, it's just it blows me away. I love excellence in anything. I don't care if it's playing a piano or or jump roping. I mean, seriously, if it's excellent, I, I'm blown away. But to be honest, and I don't I don't mean this in any big headed way at all. But I've had that kind of question come to me from business awards and different things like that, and I've always struggled with it because I can't think of one I, it sounds horrible but there's millions but yeah there hasn't been one actor or one celebrity or one magician at any point in my life especially growing up especially pre-adult pre-business owner that made me think oh my god i aspire to be like them yeah because i think and i think this goes back to how i was brought up just my childhood how i've always been kind of a one-man show always having to fend for myself i've never looked for a handout i've never been given a handout so 
I think that part of the way I'm wired is just do it. You know, don't question it. If you want to get something done, you need to suck it up and do it. And I've learned very late in my, my life like as, as an adult, just recently, actually, I've come out of my shell and have been able to ask others for advice, for their opinions, for their help. And I've always been given help. I mean, I give help nonstop. I'm always helping people out, doing things for them, designing for them. You, you name it, I do it. But it took a long, long time for me to ask for help, which was probably my own psychological, you know, my own little flaw there as a child, you know, something I've had to over, overcome. But All right. Well, well, Rich, honest, yeah, Rich, yeah, yeah. you, you, you got to give me something. You're just, uh, what's your favorite movie? We'll, we'll just go there. We'll, we'll just say, well, what, what's your, what, where does your movie taste lie? I would say Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank. Uh, All right. Here I we go. I love that. I love that movie. I love how it's narrated. I, I just, I think uh, Morgan Freeman's a great narrator. It, it's it, The movie itself is very powerful. And I think being that I have a father serving multiple life sentence and, sentences in prison, <laughs> I think I might have a, uh, interest in prison movies? I don't know, but that movie blew me away. Absolutely, probably one of my all-time favorite movies. Well, you better get busy living or get busy dying. There you go. That's it. All right. Where do you see TV magic going? Ooh, TV magic. That's crazy. Now, just with the accessibility of everyday people like me and you, being able to have internet access, HD video, uh, you know, being able to basically produce anything very quickly at pretty high quality has made TV magic open in a, in a sense to almost anyone because there's hundreds upon hundreds of channels. Yeah. But catch 22 of that is, is you're dealing with this enormous TV industry, which is now so massive, so diluted that now it's this whole engine. It's so, it's so saturated that it's almost harder in a way to break in because there's so much competition, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a catch-22. It'd be like me living here where I live. I'm kind of like the big fish because there's not a lot of entertainers. And in a way, it's fantastic. But at the same time, it's horrible because there's no opportunity. There's no business. So it's like it's that same kind of thing. And now the TV industry is just – it's exciting because there's so much technology. There's so much ability for a lot of people out there who are very talented and have great ideas to produce some great things. And it's happened. But at the same time, there's a lot of competition. But – so, all right, so, imagine, yeah. In, in uh, techno techno technologically speaking, it's fantastic. But as far as where the magic is going, it's interesting because you got to look at people like Chris Angel who have had to really push the limits on, I don't want to say creative editing, but going beyond just doing sleight of hand. I mean, it's, it's getting very creative with the effects because they want so much material. I mean, he's doing, I don't know how many specials he's done on A&E alone. But to have that much footage, you really have to start consulting with a lot of people beyond magic, you know, just uh, everyday people. And it's crazy. Yeah. So I don't know how else to compete with that. But to put together a show, a one-time special, or just TV magic in general, like doing something on the news, oh, it's, it's unlimited, I think. I mean, I've done a lot of stuff on the news that are just, it's just awesome taking advantage of technology and, and what's available to us now. But to put together a TV special like Chris Angel, I mean, that's, that's a one in a billion right there. That's crazy. So what would you tell an aspiring television magician, somebody who really, really wanted to have some kind of presence on television, like you said, either as a one-time special, a series, or just someone who pops up on the news and does variety kind of stuff? I think it's a, a whole totally different question. I think the news, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's just awesome for someone right now that wants to do a, a really cool publicity stunt. I mean, that's, that's a whole other story. But for an aspiring person who is admiring Chris Angel and I mean maybe the three four others you can name it. Cyril, oh my God, Cyril's just insane. I love him. He's one of my all-time favorite. He's magicians. fantastic. Yeah, it's just incredible. My God, yeah, people like that make so many of these. In, it's huge generation of up-and-coming magician and, and not magician professionally, but magicians that are like you know these hobbyists. There's so many right now. This generation, they look at that and they think, oh my God, I can do that too. They need to understand that what they're seeing is five percent of it. The amount of loops they got to jump through the amount of business and marketing and meetings and, and, and just the amount of stuff behind the scenes is, is it takes a special person to be able to handle all of that. Plus be able to handle quality magic and be able to perform under the, you know, the pressure and speed at which these guys do this stuff. I mean, it's not what it looks like in the final production. I mean, it's, it takes a very special person to be able to pull it off, but someone aspiring to do that, I mean, I would give them the advice that, hey, just look at the business side of running a business. If you sold paper clips for a living, 
you got a lot, 99% of what you're doing is the marketing and the networking and, and the pounding the pavement. Same thing with putting together any kind of other specials and, 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 and marketing any, I don't care what it is. If you're a full-time magician, a dancer, a, a selling a paper clips. I mean, there's a lot to the behind the scenes. Don't just focus on the glamorous side of like the final package and realize yeah. there's a lot more. But if they're interested, by all means, go for it because it's hot, it's fun. And, and right now, magic hotter than ever. But they have to deal with the fact that it's an uphill battle of so much saturation and extreme talent out there in all directions. I mean, behind the scenes, the producing and the editing and everything else, there's a, there's a lot to it. It's not just being able to perform really killer effects in front of your friends. That's that, Like I said, that's to me, that's like 5% of it, 10% of it. That's not enough, you know? Yeah. But definitely go for it because I'm not, I'm not a... I'm not a basher of dream, that's for sure. I say absolutely go for it, but definitely don't fool yourself that there's a lot more to it. 